Hey guys, just a quick message before we get started today on the video. Don't worry, Debbie will be here. I have to take a moment to give a special shout out today to someone who means the world to me. Had it not been for our YouTube channel, I wouldn't know this person. And it's their birthday. So I want to give a very, very special shout out to who is now my best friend, a person I call my brother, and he calls me his sister. And I'm beyond honored by that. And that is to Brett Hum. Brett, I love you. You're an amazing person. Um, getting to know you um, over this last year has been absolutely one of the biggest blessings in my life. I hate that an ocean separates us, but uh, um, I just, I love you to death. You've done a lot for our channel to help us, but more importantly, you've been an amazing friend. And I love you to death, buddy. Happy birthday. Please wish Brett a happy birthday, guys. Thank you so much. Now we'll get on with the video. Hey. Hey, hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hello. That's brutal. Just, just two patriotic girls. So please don't take us the wrong way. Hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. And happy holidays. And for those of you that wanted to wait till December 1st, sorry. <laughs> Here in America, it's well, today, of course, is the day after Thanksgiving, and we, unlike some people mm -hmm. who decorate, like, after freaking Halloween, Halloween <laughs> typically a lot of Americans like to do stuff um, the day after Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving so we're ready for it. Bring it on. <laughs> um, before we get any further into this video, guys, if you like the content we do, what depths? Uh, consider subscribing, and if you like what this video, please hit the like button. You wasn't, she wasn't prepared for me to No, I wasn't. <laughs> Throw it at her every now and then. Um, but uh, yeah, so some of you know um, that uh, I did a live video um, just a year ago. That's on our channel. If you want to watch it, you don't have to. Um, explaining why Christmas for me has been very, very, very hard. Actually impossible for a lot, since 2018. Um, so I have lost Christmas spirit. This year I'm trying to bring it back. And we thought this would be a good way to do that. So I'm going to try to do my best this year to be more into it and get Christmas back in my heart and my soul. I do miss it. It is hard still, um, but I will say Just this. Just the other day, she got something to help with that spirit. I did, and I have to give a really special thank you to Glenn Wright. Um, you, sir, have helped this already catapult off into a good year for me. Mm -hmm. So Glenn sent something very special in a P.O. box to me for a late birthday present slash early Christmas present, and he said, I hope that this is the first set you have received. Oh, Glenn, it's the first set, probably the only one, um, but I absolutely am so excited about this. You guys know I love the Royal Marines band, the Royal Marines in general, the military. Look what Glenn hooked me up with. Come on, you she guys. got the sticks. The Royal Marines. I know a real, I know these aren't from the Royal Marines themselves that use them, but still, these are, I'm cherishing these forever. I got to find a stand to display these somehow. She's been drumming everything. Well, dental stuff though, because I don't want to, I don't yeah. want to chip the paint off. Yeah. Um, but I can't thank you enough, Glenn. I'm seriously these I will cherish so desperately, and you'll be seeing them in the video most of the time. Seriously, this means a lot to me. Yes, thank you to Glenn, and thank you to everyone that sends us stuff in the P.O. box. Absolutely. So we're going to check out Christmas in London today. Yes, we're um, going to check out all the things to do there, and um, I can't wait to get into it, just check out the lights. Yeah, and we we're haven't seen any of this before, have we? No, we haven't. It's time to find out. So let's see what Christmas in London is. And then please stay tuned at the end of the video because we have some thoughts to share with you and some questions for you on Christmas in the United Kingdom. So please don't leave at the end of the video. All right, you ready for this? I am ready. Let's check out Christmas in London. First time ever seeing this. Oh, wow. The run up to Christmas is a wonderful time We're to here. visit London. Vibrant streets are draped in thousands of twinkling lights and tall trees are adorned with spectacular decorations. That's beautiful. This, combined with the numerous special events and seasonal markets, make London a great place for a festive city break. In this video, I'll show you how we spent just under four days in London at the end of November. Wow. On this trip, we mainly focused on Christmas-themed activities, but did throw in a couple of year-round attractions along the way. Wow, beautiful. I've added timestamps for each activity to the description below, so if there are any parts you would like to skip or jump ahead to, then you can use this to navigate your way around the video. Skip skipping any of this. <laughs> I will also try to incorporate tips and practical information along the way. So, whether you're looking for ideas for your own future Christmas trip to London, mm. or you just fancy watching something to get you in that holiday spirit, then I hope you enjoy this video itinerary. Heck yeah, I'm already enjoying this. It's making me feel festive. Not so After much checking into our hotel, it was time for our first activity of our trip, 
Hyde Park Winter Wonderland. Oh, cool. Whoa. Yeah. From mid-November until January, Hyde Park becomes home to the most festive fair around, offering a wide range of rides, shows, carnival games, ice skating, <sighs> shopping, food and drink. There's plenty to keep you entertained. Wow. Yeah, have me at Winter Wonderland. I want to go. <laughs> I want to go now. All I know about Hyde Park is when Queen did their uh, concert there yeah. in 76. 76 70, yeah, that's correct. Uh, but this is cool. The event was split into several zones, similar to a regular theme park, to help you navigate your way around. We made our way straight towards the Thrill Zone to check out the roller coasters. <laughs> it looks warm. We that reminds me of that old game, Mousetrap. I wonder if that's what it's called. <laughs> Darted off with Wild Mouse XXL, where the queue was actually almost as fun as the coaster itself. <laughs> Whoa! I'll oh break my neck. Okay, I get, I get dizzy at oh, dizzy. easily in life. As much as we have loved to have tried all, Nope. Most of the rides, <laughs> it's worth mentioning at this point that you pay per person per ride, and the rides here are very expensive. Mm. I'll show you a few examples of some of the rides available. Oh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> There's Munich Looping, the world's largest portable coaster. The Hangover, which lifts you and then holds no. you at yeah, 85 meters above the fair before suddenly dropping you to the ground. If you fancy a ride with a view, but without the peril, then hop on the giant wheel, yeah. which takes you all... You can do a Ferris wheel as afraid of heights that you, as you are. Yeah, you're, I can't. you're enclosed in there. You, no! Okay. My poor mom told me when she was younger she got stuck on one at the top. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Well, I've been stuck on one too, but it's still good. Almost as high as the hangover. Yeah. Yeah. If you enjoy a haunted house, then the haunted mansion is a great option. On. For Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it seems odd. You could take a sleigh ride on Snowjet, one of the fastest oh, rides at Winter Wonderland. I love it. Look at the little owl up there. Oh god, this yeah. that makes me feel a bit sick. Yeah. There are plenty of rides for the Don't little ones, including this iconic Christmas tree carousel where you sit in oversized baubles. I want to do there it. There are many other rides, but I won't list them all, so let's move on. That's cool. Over in the Arctic Circle, you'll find the magical Ice Kingdom. Ooh. Enter a frost-covered world where over 500 so cool. tons of ice and snow are Whoa. sculptured into a fantasy land of wizards and dragons. They do keep the room at minus 10, so make sure you bring your hat and gloves. Oh wow, look at this telescope! And then over here they've got candles in the ice. Those can't- If you aren't called- Those can't all be ice sculptures, are they really? Yeah. Like hand that's done? Awesome. Hand done? Because that's insanely um elaborate. That's pretty cool. This is really neat. I'm loving it. Old enough already, then there's an ice slide you can whiz down. Or at an least ice? attempt to, like I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be hard. Oh that stinks. After a visit to the magical ice kingdom, you'll probably want something to warm you up, so let's Action. talk about food and drink. The main areas for food are the Street Food Village, the Bavarian Village, and the Christmas Market. Although there are vendors scattered throughout the event, in short, you won't go hungry. There are also Perfect. several bars dotted around the event, including the Fire Chocolate. Pit, where live bands mm. play under a canopy of golden twinkling lights. Oh, I love and this! And a giant Scandinavian teepee that's kept cozy and warm by a large crackling fire right there in the middle. Perfect once the sun has gone down and the temperature has dropped. I'm in love with this place right here. I know. This is I, awesome. I, I want to go. go in there. I want some hot chocolate uh -huh. in a giant mug. Extra marshmallows, whipped cream <laughs> on top. Definitely. Some shaved uh some shaved chocolate on there. Yes. I want to be near the fire fire pit. Mm -hmm. This is so cool. I want to eat all the foods. What's your favorite foods um for this time of the year, like when you're out at these types of places? Mm, to get. Pencil. Yeah. One of the highlights for me at Hyde Park Winter Wonderland was over at the circus tent. Here you can watch the family-friendly Zippo Circus, 
or like us, you could choose to watch Cirque Berserk. Cirque is amazing. This high energy show features incredible circus acts from around the world. For a solid 45 minutes, an amazingly talented group of jugglers, acrobats, aerialists, dancers and stuntmen kept us on the edge of our seat. Not only that, but there was plenty of humour thrown in and the atmosphere was absolutely brilliant. The highlight had to be oh, the no. motorcycle this globe of scary. death. Okay. This freaked me out. I would imagine by now there might be a split between some of you thinking this all looks like great fun and some of you thinking you would rather listen to Band-Aid on repeat than enjoy Winter Wonderland. We fall into the former group and really enjoyed our time there. Yes, it is expensive, and if you aren't oh, careful, wow. you could cool. easily spend a lot of money. But overall, mm -hmm. it was a great way to kick off our trip, especially watching Cirque Berserk and walking through the magical Ice Kingdom. This year, they encourage you to book before you visit. This is Whether last this year, is just for 2021 or this is something that's here to stay, I don't know. But for now, try to pre book, especially if you're visiting at a peak time. Makes sense. Entry is free during off peak times and either £5 or £7.50 during peak times. When booking your tickets online, if you spend £20 in advance on attractions or entertainment, then entry is free. Rather than getting nice. the tube straight back to our hotel in Fitzrovia, we decided to take ourselves on a stroll around a few of the best Christmas light displays in London. Ooh, let's see our walk started on Oxford Street, wow. which is Europe's busiest shopping street, and runs right through London's West End. This year there are rows and rows of gold stars with silver streams hanging above the streets. It's also home to the world famous Selfridges. That's cool. We took a short walk from Oxford Street up and down St. Christopher's Place where baubles float above your head. Oh, that's nice. That's neat too. Heading a little further along, we were then drawn to the icy blue glow of South Moulton Street. Yeah, you got my attention. Our next stop was Bond Street, which oh, was wow, illuminated by giant nice. peacock feathers. These feathers are actually a nod to groups of dapper men back in the 18th century who were known as peacocks for strutting their stuff down the street in their extravagant clothing. Okay. This is so cool. I'm really, really enjoying this. And right I'm glad now. you paused it on Cartier again. I know. Again. This is such a pretty little scene right there. It is very pretty. This is really neat. Next up was Oxford Street's very posh neighbour, Regent Street. Okay. Coming up Ooh, on our left so now are those whoa. huge angels above Regent Street. Wow. Those are, wow. That Absolutely is, massive. That is stunning. stunning. Wow. That is so cool. That is really pretty. I love the angels. So there's a lot of work that goes into putting lights uh, up and lights yeah, yeah. I bet. <laughs> Known as the Spirit of Christmas, this beautiful installation features humongous glittering angels yeah, soaring so... above the streets. That is very pretty. Next was Carnaby Street, where wow. over 600 hand-decorated butterflies fluttered above our heads. Look the at installation, that. known as Carnaby Kaleidoscope, was created in collaboration with Choose Love, oh, the shop wow. set up by the charity Help Refugees that supports refugees all over the world. Oh wow, that's really cool. At this point, it was around 11pm and our feet were really starting oh, like to that. feel it after all of the walking we'd done. Wow. So we called it a night and headed back to our hotel. That is one of the, the coolest morning, parts. Hopped... Real quick, let's go back yeah, to the Carnaby know. Street real quick. I want to see that again. The Carnaby Kaleidoscope. First of all, it's, that is so pretty. That is. That is. And then what she said about the, the money. Refugees that supports refugees all over the world. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. At this point, it was around 11 p.m. and That's our feet beautiful. were really starting to feel it after all of the walking we'd done. So we called it tonight and headed back to our hotel. So pretty. The next morning, we hopped on the tube to take the central line to Bank, where we would start our morning at the airy Leadenhall Market. Okay. Historically, this was a meat market, and you can still see the meat hooks outside several of the stores, so okay. make sure you look up. A In Leadenhall Markets, you'll find boutiques, restaurants, cafes, and places to drink. That's gorgeous. We were here to visit Omevu. Oh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Pastries. Oh, hold on, hold on. So make sure you look up. There's a spot. In Leadenhall Markets, you'll find boutiques, restaurants, cafes, and places to drink. That is beautiful. That is stunning and also and oh so England. Oh so yeah, and English. And I love that it's like simple decorations, but it's just so perfect. Tr it's traditional enough. 
Yeah. And um, you know who that reminds me of, right? Your mom. Yeah. My mom. Mom would have loved this video. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish she could watch these guys. Yeah, she would have loved these, especially this. Yeah, she would have. Beautiful. Mwah. Miss you, Mom. We were here to visit Au Merveilleux de Fred for a coffee and one of their delicious flaky pastries. Mm. Our next stop was just a few minutes Whoa. walk from Leadenhall Market, the Sky Garden, which is one of the best free viewpoints in London. Wow! If you enjoy tropical plants then you will love the lush indoor garden. Yeah. After walking by the beautiful greenery, head out to the balcony where you'll have wow. incredible far-reaching views over London. You can check out the icons on the glass to help you identify the different That's landmarks, nice. which is a really cool little yeah, touch. As you can see, it was pretty overcast when we visited, but we did still really enjoy looking out over there. Did no one else notice that? You didn't notice that car just then? That looks really weird. The way it was traveling, <laughs> it looked no. like it wasn't going down the road quite right. Look at that again. It's on the glass Maybe to help I'm you crazy. identify the different landmarks, Ooh, which is right, a really right, cool right. little touch. Am I crazy? As you can see, it was pretty overcast when we visited, but we did still really enjoy looking out well, over the city. Yes. A quick note to say that although entry is free, you will want to book your space up to three weeks in advance, wow. as tickets are limited. Okay. Nice. From here, we took a short walk past the Tower of London. You can take a tour of this historic castle, yes. however, we continue to the south of the Thames by crossing the iconic Tower Bridge. Okay. Once on the south side. I don't know if you guys realize, this is our first look at London, too. Mm -hmm. Like, this is our first time looking at London. Yeah. All the travel videos we've done, we have not done London. No, we haven't. So we're doing Christmas London, so this is the first look. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pause so much. I'm just, this is a lot, and it's so pretty. ...of the Thames by crossing the iconic Tower Bridge. Once on the south side, you can get that perfect view of Tower Bridge. Wow. Just cross to the other side of Tower Bridge, and you get really good view of it from here. That's beautiful. The exact vantage point we're showing you now is in front of City Hall and Potter's Fields Park mm -hmm. along the South Bank. I like that she's You'll also that. find a beautiful Christmas market known as Christmas by the River. Wow. Pancake art. Wooden stalls Aww. line the path, all Christmas? with a stunning backdrop of Tower Bridge and the city skyline. Oh, heck yeah. Um, Yay. yes, please. After browsing the yes, stalls, we came across this lovely little shelter, so couldn't resist grabbing a mulled wine and a hot toddy to sip while we looked out over the Thames. That's awesome. That's awesome. Wow. We continued along the Thames path for a couple more miles. We really enjoyed walking along the river, watching the boats and admiring the buildings. That's so cool. We've just come up to the next market wow, and look at this lights. neon light installation. Oh, that is cool. By mid-afternoon, we reached South Bank Winter Market and we're very ready for lunch. There's so many tempting options for food here. I just... So, so, <laughs> Dutch pancakes, fondue, yes. Hot chocolate, I know. Sign us up. <laughs> Somebody come pick us up now. Can someone come get us and bring us there? Right. Who can we stay with? Who's in London? <laughs> um, who can we come stay with? And yeah, we need to come there now. This yeah, is ridiculous, I mean, man. I can't wait another year to go there for this. It's the season. Screw summer. We're coming now. <laughs> I guarantee it's colder here than it is there. Yeah, so, probably uh, is. No, I, I paused that for a reason, but now not what it was. Okay. Sorry. I'll figure it out. Help me. <laughs> yes, pizza. Ooh, there we go. After warming ourselves up in one of the heated bars, we continued following the river to cross Westminster Bridge. So pretty! Here you can see Elizabeth Tower, which is much more commonly known as Big Ben. From like Westminster, we hopped on a tube to take the district line out to what was probably one of my most anticipated seasonal activities of the trip. Every year, the okay. Gardens hosts an after dark festive trail. Love it. Stroll nice. through the gardens, oh, now aglow with millions of lights. These Walk. enchanting displays light your way along the trail and music wow. fills the air all the way around. Light shows were synchronized to music, which unfortunately I can't show you with the sound because of copyright reasons, but mm, they we were understand. really well done. <laughs> On the website it estimates wow. that the trail will take around 75 minutes, but we ended up spending at least two hours there. Oh goodness, It's worth wonderful. taking your time along the trail and stopping to watch the different displays. What? How cool is it that? It really is incredible how- Is that on the trees? That is on the trees. That is freaking awesome. 
I haven't seen anything like that here. Now, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you have. Not on the trees. Not on the, the trees. But I'm going to say, we do have yes. lights and stuff and some lights. really cool light shows. We do have a lot of similarities, but they're not to the scale by any means. No. But this is absolutely stunning, especially in the trees. That is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I'm loving this. Time along the trail and stopping to yes. watch the different displays. It ah. really is incredible how much work must go into mm -hmm. setting up and maintaining this event. Yeah, that's awesome. There are stalls selling food and drink on the way round, although bear in mind that they are quite expensive. Yeah. If you do want to go wow. to Christmas at Q, that's then I would beautiful. recommend getting tickets as early as you can as they do sell out fast. Mm -hmm. Someone Even come though get us. it definitely <laughs> feels wrong to plan for Christmas in summer, we bought our tickets at the end of August and many of the popular wow. dates had already sold out. After having attended the event, I can She just said they sold out. Yeah, in August. Holy crap, and what did I just pause this on? I don't know, it's pretty awesome. I'm looking. Glad I did. <laughs> If you guys are liking this as much as we are, please hit that like button. Show some love for yeah. Christmas. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I can completely understand why it's so popular, though, as we wow. thoroughly enjoyed every moment wow. of the trail. Wow, cool. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm pausing again. You know why? Because that's awesome. Because there's fire. There's fire in the trees. <laughs> there's like basically like cartoon art that's like, not oh, cartoon, no. like basically like trees are moving. Mm -hmm. Really? Been holding out. No one Light told us water. about this. No one told us to look at Christmas in London. No. Well, I'm glad we are. This is ridiculous. Come on, England. It's not fair. That's amazing. It's so pretty. Uh huh. Mom would have loved it. Yes. The next morning, we hopped on a train to the Warner Brothers studio tour, The Making of Harry Potter. If you visit between mid November to mid January, then you'll experience the Harry Potter tour with a twist, as the studios are decorated for the holidays as part of the annual event Hogwarts in the Snow. Spot Christmas trees and festive treats dotted around, and That's explore cool. sets now mm -hmm. blanketed in snow. They even have snow falling outside on Privet Drive. Oh, really? Like it's not when real? you first arrive, fake snow. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, and just again, you guys, this part's lost on us because we have never seen Harry Potter or read a book or anything. So don't hate us. <laughs> Actually, I saw the very first one, but none <gasps> after that. What? I told you that. Like ten years but... ago, probably. <laughs> I don't remember. You'll be greeted by the huge dragon that would normally be guarding the vaults at Gringotts. Hmm. Once the behind the scenes tour starts, you're guided through the actual okay. sets and props from I the I bet movies. that's a very busy. Any view. Harry Potter fan will love the part near the start where they open up the grand doors and you walk into the Great Hall, Still which really during cool. our wow. visit was Whoa. elaborately decked out with wreaths, garlands, and Christmas mm. trees, and the long tables were overflowing with a Christmas feast. You are ready? Three, two, Sorry. one. That's really neat. Wow. wow, that's exceedingly festive. Now these puddings can go on burning for a hundred years if they wanted to. They're made of concrete and topped by steel holly. Hmm. After being released from the Great Hall, you explore the studios at your own pace. Browse the vast collection of costumes and discover more about the intricate work of the makeup artists. Mold. Follow the creation of creatures from concept to completion and come face to face with a fire-breathing dragon. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I would like that part. One well, of the that, highlights of this tour cool. was the creepy forbidden forest. Not recommended for anybody who's scared of spiders. Not for sure. Uh, I'm good. Another highlight was walking wow. around the incredible scale model of Hogwarts, awesome. which was used okay. to film aerial shots. That's really impressive. Getting to see the intricate level of detail is amazing. I yeah. particularly love the tiny mm. flickering torches all around the grounds, and the lights in the windows that really oh, cool. helped bring the castle wow. to life. Not only did the castle look really pretty dusted in snow, but a staff member told us that there were two tiny snowmen hidden somewhere around the castle. <laughs> we couldn't find them, but maybe you will. Well, not less than there. Really cool. 
On your visit you can buy an audio guide, but even if you don't, don't worry, you'll still be able to read information boards and watch videos to learn behind the scenes secrets and bonus interesting facts. We didn't buy the audio guide and I still felt like we got a lot from the tour. I don't want to spoil it all, but to just give you a couple of examples of some of the interesting things we found out. During the making of Harry Potter, they had two sets for Hagrid's hut. One that you'll see at the studios for the regular size characters, and one smaller hut for Robbie Coltrane to make Hagrid appear bigger. Clever, right? Mm. Yeah. And how about those paintings, the ones depicting famous wizards? Many of these are actually portraits of the crew members, who are now immortalised in the wizarding <laughs> world through these paintings. That's neat. <clears throat> now a little bit of practical information for your visit. Firstly, there's Backlots Cafe where you can buy food. There's a simple menu serving items like burgers and hot dogs, and it does include vegan options. Then, of That's course, good. you can also buy butterbeer. It's worth noting that you can take your own food, which could be worth doing as we found the wait for food was pretty long. Mm. Now we'll talk about booking tickets. Make what? sure you book well in advance, yeah, around two to four months. Try to book your slot earlier in the day because once you're in, you're allowed to stay as long as you like. They recommend around three to four hours for a visit, although we were there for over five. <laughs> Getting there by public transport is easy. Yeah, just take one Catch of us. the train from Houston to Watford <laughs> Junction, where you will then catch a shuttle bus put on by the studio to take you the rest of the way. You don't need to book a place on the bus, just show up. How many of you would say do not rent a car in London? I bet everybody. Yeah, Is that true? Not. Like, don't. It's probably like New York City. Like, yeah. don't do that, right? Yeah, I mean, with the tube and the hey, buses. We learned how to do the tube now. I forgot what the card's called, but it's the blue thing. Do you remember? <laughs> I don't remember it's the, the name oyster of it. Oyster card. There you go. Good job. Pay okay, attention. We're gonna get our oyster card, and we'll, we'll we'll take the we'll take the the tube, and then we'll get we'll get um Pete Burke in Swindon uh -huh. to come over in London because he's a bus driver. Hi, Pete. You didn't expect that, and uh, drive a double decker for us. That's right. It's gonna happen. After our Harry Potter studio Lester tour, Square. we caught the tube to Leicester Square and made a beeline for the popular Covent Garden. Oh, Covent Garden! Covent Garden's piazza and market buildings are covered by lights, and in the wow. middle stands a twinkling 55-foot Christmas tree, nice. which is the largest hand-picked tree in London. Oh, Once you head inside the markets, you'll see oversized baubles and mistletoe hanging from the ceiling, and disco balls reflect dancing lights all over the floor and walls. That's stunning. Uh, cookie As you can see, candy. it was very busy when we arrived a little before 6 o'clock. This year, between 12pm and 7pm, every hour on the hour, snow would fall in Covent Garden. Yeah. Nice. <coughs> Not only is Covent Garden the place to go for some of the prettiest Christmas decorations in wow. London, it's also a good spot to catch performers. Heck yeah. We go from single spins to double spins, double spins to flourishes, to throwing them up and around, to throwing the fire behind my back. Crazy man. And nobody cares. I'm bold. I care. Now, it's too late, you already hurt my feelings. <laughs> After Covent Garden, we headed to one of our firm favourites for dinner in the Chinatown area. Tokyo Diner is a simple, authentic Japanese restaurant that serves up noodles, curries, and sushi. bento boxes, all at a very reasonable price. The sushi? Hmm. I think so. You like our sushi? Oh wow, what's this? For us, a trip to London would not be complete without visiting one of its many museums, so the next day we headed to South Kensington to visit one of our favourites. The popular Natural oh. History Museum houses around 80 million items, so you could spend what? hours taking it all in, especially if it's your first visit. Yeah. Collections range from mammals, living and extinct, wow. to minerals and gemstones. They even have <sighs> fragments of meteorites. Admission awesome. to the museum is free with a suggested donation. Really? However, on this occasion, nice. we paid extra for tickets to access the annual <coughs> Wildlife Photographer of the Year temporary exhibition. That's amazing. Here, 100 powerful images showcase the beauty of our planet and the pressure the natural world is under. Wow. Stunning. After the museum, we walked for around one hour to Seven Dials, a web of seven streets wow. which meet at a central sundial pillar, beautifully shimmering in lights. So Here we went inside Seven Dials Markets for our reservation and pick and cheese, which is the world's first cheese conveyor belt restaurant. What? Here you'll be offered a seemingly endless supply of over 25 types of British cheese, each- Come again? That looks interesting! 
Seven dials and pick and cheese. What did you say? 75 uh, different 25, types of cheese? 25, I think. 25? Um, British cheeses. That was why I paused earlier. Okay, cheese boards. Recently heard about these, uh -huh. but what I thought those were, are, was is there a difference between a cheese board and a charcuterie board? Because charcuterie boards have become incredibly popular yes. in our country in the last yes. few years. And um, I have to say, Debbie and I made a killer one our first try. We sure did. Um, but... Um, I don't know the difference between a cheese board and a charcuterie board. And is that something you guys only do at Christmas time? Is it that popular? I know nothing. Let us know. <laughs> this is interesting. I would totally do this. Do I know. You, do you guys like brie? We like brie. I like a lot of different cheeses. Yeah, I don't know which ones you like, though. Let us know. What's your cheese? And that's a weird it's thing probably, to ask you. Sorry. You're fine. With their own condiments. You pay by the plates, which are colour-coded by price, okay, plus yeah. there's a small selection of off-belt dishes that you can order. Simply watch the plates go round and take your pick. They're oh. tiny! Oh, that would be too hard. Sadly, it was now time for us to head back to our hotel to pick up our luggage from storage before catching our train home. If you would like oh. to look into any activities in this trip further... No, don't wow. I could have watched this for another hour. Okay, that's cool. Um... Like the, hey guys, hit the like button if you like that video. Consider subscribing to the channel if you want to join our weird family. Yeah. I suggest you should. Um, <laughs> that was so beautiful and so, I know again, it was just a short video. Yeah. But still, she, she covered a lot in there. Um, but I just don't even know which one I like the best and which one I want to go to. I, all of them. All of them. Yeah, um, definitely all of them. The, I definitely would check out that cheese. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Cheese on a conveyor belt. Uh, kinda... The Windsor Wonderland in Hyde Park was really pretty. Yeah. And I know there's another video that exists about that with more detail. If you guys want us to check mm -hmm. it out, let us know. But I did have some questions for you guys. So first of all, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite part of that video? Uh, the one with the fire and the trees and all the way. I know. Yeah. I know. That was so mm -hmm. awesome. That wonderful. was freaking gorgeous. Um, I want to go there for sure. And then they briefly showed, um, they didn't really show much of it. The Christmas markets. This is a new thing where we, we didn't really know much about. No. Um, we do have Christmas markets in America. Um, and we actually, <laughs> right before this video found out, we actually have one in our own city. <laughs> didn't know that. Um, Cincinnati, if you don't know, is a German city, um, primarily. So everything I looked at the stuff that's there. It's all German stuff. And, um, so I don't things. know that they would be the same as what you guys have. No. We haven't looked into here, so we don't really know what. Sorry, I'm, I've been helping. I pulled you the entire video. <laughs> we don't know anything about the Christmas markets. So if you guys would like us to do a video on that, please let us know. Um, let us And which one to do. Like, yeah. I heard there's so many different ones to do. I think so. We had a Facebook, we did a Facebook Live just the other night, and we were told by somebody on there that Birmingham, I think it yeah. was a Birmingham. Yeah, it was like the one of the largest ones. Let us know if you like the holiday mm -hmm. videos. We don't want to bombard you with them, and we're not going to do one every episode out from here on. No. In fact, Sunday we'll be back with uh, a history, another history video. Um, but uh, yeah, let us know about Christmas markets, other things we don't know about. Um, yeah. There's so much. What would you like us to check out um, as far as the, the different things in Christmas? I love Christmas and the lights and the trees and... The whole spirit of Christmas that you get and seems like everyone's a little bit nicer during that time of year. Yeah. Most hopefully they are. But and I, I will say this too, as I said at the beginning of the video, you know, it's been a hard time for me, and it's not just myself. There are other people that you know, and most people do love Christmas mm -hmm. and that time of the year. But let's also think about the people out there that do have a hard time. Yeah. Um, for many different reasons. But let's give a little extra love to those. If you know somebody is having a hard time, give them extra attention. You know, this year. Yes. Um, and every year for that matter. And patience. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. Patience is a big one. Um, but again, I hope you guys like this. That was so much fun for us to watch. Really, really enjoyed it. It was absolutely beautiful. We will be back on Sunday. Um, as always, especially this time of the year, please love like jazz. And be as strong as Tyson. Bye. Bye